Hey everyone, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me. Thank you replay viewers for being here and thanks YouTube viewers for watching as well. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I am here every weeknight where we relax and craft and work on a project together. Uh, I'm hoping to finish the Tweet House uh, embroidery tonight. I'm almost done. We did all the little sparkles last night and I just need to go around and uh, do all the like the little green grassy bits the uh, little little uh, pine limbs and and such so that is what we'll be doing tonight I think we'll be able to get it all done so uh, if we do then we have one more day before we start the next project so if we finish this I think tomorrow I'll set up all my sewing stuff since we'll need it for the next project and I think I might work on my splendid sampler quilt some more. So I, all I have to do is go around the border with uh, a few quilting lines. I'm keeping it simple, just quilting around the border in like a circle a few times. And uh, if you guys have been looking at the splendid sampler site, this week is my week again for uh, the Splendid Sampler block. So go check out that link that I posted. And I have my quilt here to share so I can show you my block and I'll do that in a bit. So thanks again guys for coming in tonight. I will uh, flip you around and we'll get started. I'd like to finish this guy up. So let's get going right away here. Okay. So I have a couple things to show you. So here is, I have my quilt all folded up here. It's just waiting. All I have to do is, is I have um, the blue border yet. I just have to quilt all the blue border. So I have it all pinned and everything. And I have my, here's my block right here. So the video is online I put a link or if you go to my uh, go to the penguin and fish Facebook page I just put a link to that there oh and Gretchen yes so all of the videos for all of these are online on my YouTube page at uh, penguin and fish movies but there we go so I did it all in like a chain stitch so it actually looks like a little crocheted doily so that is my block and uh, you can read about it on um, the blog post there, the, the splendidsampler.com blog post. So, all right. Oh man, I I just want to finish this so badly. It's been, uh, it's been like two years since we started this really. We started on Valentine's Day in 2016. So that's a project I, I want, I want to get finished for sure. So I think tomorrow I'll start sewing around the um, edge. Yeah, it, it actually is probably a whole lot closer to tatting <laughs> than, than um, crochet joys. I simplified it so it wouldn't get too busy with embroidery, but that made it look more like tatting. I totally agree. But all right, I had to show you guys this too. So look, these are the angel food candies. I just had to show them to you. Um, so we... We, uh, these are the ones that I'm saving for a friend and it's like hard for me to hold them because all I want to do is rip this open and eat them. We were kind of running out of chocolate, so that's why there's some, some spots there, but there, that's what it looks like in the inside. It is, uh, just like that golden brown and kind of like with a, tons of little bubbles, but it's hard like, uh, like toffee, uh, but dang, they're good. <laughs> so I had to share that with you guys since we talked about them. I know they're deadly close to me, Gretchen. I mean, they really are. I've been kind of thinking about them all day. It's horrible. Oh man. All right. So let's get to this guy. I want to get him done. So I got to get stitching on it. Uh, so we just have like the little green bits to do yet. And then, then um, like the little holly uh, berries. And uh, there's a few, there's like four little weird berries on, on this. I don't know little olivey branch thing. I'm going to recenter that. Put it up a little high. Ah. Uh, but yeah, my husband and I are both having problems knowing that that little thing of um angel food candy is still sitting around here. But luckily, the person that we're giving it to will see will see next week, so then they'll be gone. <laughs> then we'll be safe again. Safe from the candy. Yum. 
All right. So I am still just so excited about that sparkly floss that we used uh, that we used on on this yesterday. Uh, the more I use it, the more I want to make more stuff out of it. Like these little French knots just turned out so cute. Ugh, love it. All right, so uh, I think we kind of decided I'm going to just kind of keep this simple and I'm going to use this uh, green that we kind of used for these little star guys. I'm going to use it for the entire, all everything that's leafy. Uh, so even though the colors are a little different throughout, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it uh, with, with the same color here. So that'll, that'll kind of keep it congruent. Like it'll hold the piece together a little bit, just the same way that we use the same uh, thread for all, all three snowflakes. That's kind of how we'll do the rest of it. So we're back to the six strand embroidery floss. This is that Weeks Dye Works, uh, which has that, all those fun variegated, variegated colors. Oh, you, you adore the winter scenes and you're going to try the, the summer one too. That's awesome. Yeah, the original, the original one was, one was pretty summery. Um, you know, none of this winter stuff around it and it had like little flower uh, decorations instead of, I don't know, these little diamondy stars. So <laughs> uh, I wanted to stitch this one now. I'm like, I can't stitch a summery, summery thing. So that's why I made that, that bonus pattern. Oh, and I... Uh, you know, I still haven't taken that bonus pattern down. So if you, uh, I was going to take it down on the first, but um, I haven't yet. So if you haven't gotten the the Tweet House pattern, uh, you'll still get the winter bonus one for free uh, when you get it. <laughs> just because I, just because I haven't taken it down yet. Oh, you're coloring it too. I, you know, I'm having so much fun with this this coloring technique. I haven't done the coloring technique before, and man, after this first one, I can totally see doing it again. Like, I especially like how the, the snowflakes turned out with that little just uh, shimmer of, of color behind it and sparkly floss on top. That was a lot of fun. It does just add something to it, and man, it's so relaxing just to color in the lines, just to, just to color. You know, I'm, I kind of get why people like those uh, those adult coloring coloring books now. Just because the moment you pick up a crayon or a colored pencil and start coloring it in, it just you just kind of zen out more than I thought. Oh, you have the the wreath one with the bird on it. Oh, that's cool. I I really like that one a lot. I was considering doing that one instead of this one for the coloring project but this one had more stuff to color in so that's why that's why I did this one and now I, I like it a, uh, a lot more because it's all winterized now all right so I got my my uh, three guys here we got Zeb there we go here's his here's the embroidery needle okay I am going to wow it's getting so dry here my fingers are super dry um, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start on this guy. I think I don't know. It's, it's calling to me, uh, and I think I'm gonna start uh, by weaving in the backs of these stitches and then just making a little leap here. Oh, you missed yesterday, but was the metallic thread you used for the snow? It was not. I mean, it was. It's definitely not as easy to work with as just cotton embroidery floss. You do have to really be aware that it's not twisting around itself. Uh, cause it'll just, it'll just want to be in a knot, um, and just kind of go wherever. So it, it's actually a whole lot easier, um, than I thought it was going to be. So you don't have to feel like it's impossible or that it's really all that difficult, but, uh, you know, I would stick to one strand. That's what I did. I think if I did two strands to make it a little thicker, it would have kind of went all over the place. Uh, but no, I think, you know. It's definitely, you can feel that it's a little different than, than, uh, um, than just the plain floss, but it's not horrible. So I think, I think you'd be able to do it. I mean, this particular kind. So they're all different. Some like to twist up more than, than others. 
Uh, some like to not move as well as others, like they don't want to bend as much as others. This one is kind of more of a metallic one, so this one maybe doesn't want to, you know, lay as flat or be as flexible as, as floss. Um, but it was still pretty easy. And I did put a link to this, the Nishi Kiito, this, this uh, metallic floss and this color. I put a, a link to that in, in the post here today. Uh, Glennis, uh, you can, uh, in, in theory, get notifications on your phone when I'm live. Uh, if you're on Penguin and Fish, the Penguin and Fish Facebook page, just go to the top where those little buttons, like where the like button is. First of all, make sure that you click like on the Facebook page. And then if you, not uh, right next to it, if you click following, I think it's following, then you can, you can say you can get notifications there. So that's, that's probably the easiest way, unless you just happen to be on the Penguin and Fish page at 8.30 uh, Central Time. So that's, that's the other way, but that's not as easy as the notification. <laughs> oh my gosh, I already love this. I already love this kind of haze of green behind these stitches. Oh man, I'm excited. It is a little hard to see where where these little little bits are though because um oops little fuzzle because I colored over all my lines so that kind of smeared my pencil lines a little bit but I think I can see them I think I can see them enough here ugh I am loving that little haze though of of crayon you know I'm I'm really surprised because when I when I started this and I got all the crayon on, I'm just like, oh man, that crayon is so bold. It's just going to be empower or like overpowering this whole, whole piece with all these, with all the, uh, all the crayon. It's just too much maybe, but man, it really get like gets pushed to the background once you put stitches on it. Like the stitches really, really are still called out quite a bit more. Ugh, these are so cute, just itty bitty stitches. Yeah, I think with, uh, it really, just like the crayon with the, with the stitching, it really is, adds a lot of texture, I like it. Yeah, I know, it's, it's just a, it's a fun invention, this little, little deal with the, the crayon tinting. I bet you it's been around for a while, I don't know. You'd think. I'm just kinda stitching that center line as I go. Just because I want to end up here so I can jump to the next one. Yeah, Gretchen, I've seen a few people do it before, but I had never I've I'd never stitched it. Or I've never done the, the crayon and stitching before. But I love that there's just a little bit of hint of green behind that. And I'm hoping that since I did a different color green here compared to there, that that will be a little apparent. And, you know, I'm using this variegated floss, so just the variegated floss might might uh, change it up. Like it's looking super green right now, but it's pretty vari variegated. Like it goes to like a, almost a full gray. <laughs> I just realized that my fingernails match match the the project again. All right, did I I think I have little dots on the top. Oh yeah, I do. So little french knots on the on the tips of all these like little little evergreen buds. So I'll make sure to get those on. I you know, I forgot those french knots last night and had to go back to it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, isn't this fun? I, I'm totally loving the embroidery and and coloring together. Oh, you did buy the polish. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, Sue. <laughs> yeah, this, this uh, I had never used this. Sue asked me the other day what, what nail polish this was in a Facebook message. And uh, I had never used 
this kind before. I think I got it at a salon or something. They had a little bin of like half off, uh, half off of their nail polishes. And, and so I got, I got this green and I think it's, it's one of my favorites now. <laughs> oh, you got funny holiday nails on. All right. I'm gonna get that little French knot on the end of this guy, and then we'll we'll move on to some of those other branches. All right. I got I always like laying uh, my my embroidery on the table when I do the French knots. I'll zoom in again for you guys. We'll get real close for this French knot. Okay. So holding holding the thread away uh, away from the fabric, pointing the needle away from the fabric. Wrapping around twice, get those fingers on there to hold those loops, then point it back towards the fabric and uh, put the needle in uh, like partially in a different place from the from where you came out though. I'm like a two threads over or so. Then I'm gonna let go and uh, pull that knot against the needle there. And then I'm gonna hold hold that knot so the oops, sorry, I'm gonna hold that knot so the loops don't come apart while I pull, pull it through. There we go. All right, I'm gonna zoom you guys back out. Oop, wrong way. Maybe we'll go, this is a little closer. We'll, we'll go right here maybe. All right, uh, let's keep going on these little, these little uh, ferny ferns. Needles, pine needles, that's what they are. A lot of little stitches in in this thing. Little little pine bow bow. I'm gonna run out of thread just on this little guy here. There, see now now it's turning gray. The variegation, which is kind of neat. Oh, see, my hands are so dry, I just pulled, pulled the thread. Man, can't have enough lotion <laughs> this time of year, I guess. It's annoying. All right, I'm going to do one stitch, and then I'll do the French knot. Ooh, actually, I'm going to do that differently. Because I was going to make my stitch up to here, but then I don't have enough space to come out again for the French knot. So I'm just going to keep going down and, and uh, finish this branch and then I'll come back up. Oops. Some utter cream. Oh, I'll have to look, I'll have to look for that. Man, I'm even wearing like lotion and those like lotion gloves at night now just because my hands get so dry but I was doing a lot of a lot of work with my hands today so I think maybe uh they just got too much so I, I realized that I missed this up there but I'm gonna I'm gonna get back up there we'll do this one first man I really kind of do think that this is gonna take up the entire My whole piece of thread, just this one little dude here. Big bomber. Oh, coconut oil. I should I have some of that. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Deborah. I like this color shift. Ugh. No fun, Patricia. Oh, the utter cream doesn't work for you. I got this, uh, I mean, you know, I don't know, just this evening, it's just looking super bad again. But um, there is this soap place by my parents' house that, you know, some, like a local artisan that made their own soap and, uh, and candles and, and, 
they had a, a neat cream that I like. All right, now we'll do this French knot here and then I'll jump back up to those that other French knot. So I'll, I'll zoom in again. Oh, it looks so fuzzy with all these little stitches and I like it. There, this is, this is my normal speed of French knots. There, I always hold that there in place though. Ah, there we go. And I'm gonna just jump up. I have one more stitch here to make and then the French knot here. Then I'm gonna have to assess how much thread I have left. I, I don't know if I have enough thread to go up and do that other, other little leaf here. Oh, Vaseline and cotton gloves. Oh, maybe I'll try that, Patricia. Oh my God, you know what? I'm not even sure if I have any Vaseline though, now that I think of it. All right, there's our first little ferny, um, I keep saying fern, but it's not a fern. It's, it's like an evergreen bough. So, all right, uh, man, I do not know if I have enough thread for this, let's see, it's it's three uh, three chain stitches, and then maybe three back stitches. Ah, we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna just jump right up from where I left off here. All right, so here's the one where I didn't draw the whole shape. I just put like the top marks of each of each of these chain stitches, which probably wasn't a great idea. I I, I drew them on for these other ones, and I kind of wish I did that for here because it was hard to color in without knowing where the lines were. So next time um, I would, I'd probably draw the whole shape, but there we go. Our first little chain stitch, single chain stitch. All right, next up. So I'm coming out at, so it's, you know, it's gonna be, this is the stem. So I'm gonna loop it around like this, but this side. So I'm making my, my thread in the shape of the loop like the loop's gonna go this direction, so I'm making my loop this direction. So I'm coming out and I'm going back in the same hole and then coming out at the middle point. And I want it to be in that loop so it catches. And then we just tack it down with one little last stitch on the other side of the, the stitch there. It's exactly what we were doing for for these guys up here, but instead of coming out in one place and going in a totally different place, uh, we're coming in and out of the same same place. There, see like that. And then up through the middle of the loop. There we go. And don't pull it tight. If you pull it tight, like here I'm pulling it super tight, then it starts to look like one straight stitch like you can't tell that it's like a, a loop at all so don't worry about leaving it a little loose it can be loose there we're gonna be tacking it down with that other stitch so it'll it'll stay so don't worry about not pulling super tight all right and then just putting that stitch on the other side of it there all right um okay and then i'm gonna just go back and get these last couple stitches here you just shape this a little bit. There we go. I think three little stitches will do. All right, sweet. Okay, this is cute. I like this little guy. All right, now I think we are probably done with that thread for now. Wow, this is really getting bold around this edge here. You know, it's it's a lot more subtle uh, with just the crayon, but yeah, now it's things are really starting to to pop on this, I think. So, all right, let's flip flip her around and we'll weave in the ends here. I don't have much to weave in. Uh, those stitches didn't make make a lot of things on loops on the back for me to weave into, but by going back and forth a few times, we can catch catch a few threads here and there. All right. All 
So I'm going to grab a, another piece of floss. I'll zoom you guys out so you can see so far. Oop, I always go the wrong way. Okay, I think that's all the way out. So there we go. We got some little texture to start there. Oh, I have three threads. Here they are. Um, usually I like separating the three threads and putting them back together, but I think I'm going to just try it with, uh, with these three remaining threads that I have. Uh, all right. So next up, we have these little uh, holly leaves and then we don't have anything to like way up here. So, all right, we'll do that. These holly leaves. I think I'm going to weave it into the back here and then jump quickly do the, the holly leaves and then we'll, we'll end the floss here and then I'll start fresh up here for, for these guys. I always have, a, I like to have a map, like a plan of how I'm going to utilize the, the floss efficiently when I go, when I start. So that's, that's what's going on in my brain. Like, where do I start and what path do I take and how much thread do I think it'll use up? Actually, that's one of the things <laughs> I've been thinking about machine or free motion quilting today, because that's going to be our next project is the charming chevrons quilt. And I'm hoping once we finish the quilt, I'm hoping that that's going to be really like an education of free motion quilting. I want to, I want to um, get the machine out and attempt to learn, <laughs> learn how to do that. But that's one of my big fears with the free motion quilting that I'm getting a design going and then I can't like I make an awkward space that I can't get out of. That's kind of like what I'm thinking about when I'm mapping out, when I'm mapping out where to go with, with the thread. Like I'm afraid I'm going to, you know, have a whole map and then I have like one little line that I, that I have to get to yet, but I can't because I've already, you know, I'm already far away from it. You know what I mean? That's, that's uh, going to be my fear with, um, oops, I got a little knot going on here. That's my fear with the the free motion quilting coming up. So uh, if I can conquer that fear, then then it'll become enjoyable for sure. I'm just trying to grab the end. So if you have a, let me show you guys this quick. Hopefully it, it's easy to get out. But uh, with embroidery, a lot of times if you accidentally wrap a thread around another thread, it'll make these loopy knots. The easiest way to get these loopy knots out is to put your needle right in the loop and pull on one or the other thread and one of them is going to make it, one's going to like get, make it tighter and one's going to make it, uh, make the knot move right up. So I found which one it was and I, you know, got the knot so it's right up against the needle. Then you can take the needle out and it'll just kind of pop right out at that point. There we go. So if you have any of those weird loopy knots, that's, that's how to get rid of them. Oh man, I'm having a hard time zooming on my phone today. There we go. All right. All right. Where were we now? Shorten my thread up again. Kind of took a long piece of thread longer than usual. There we go. Oh, you long arm. You have to think ahead. Listen to music. Keep the rhythm. Oh, that's a good suggestion, Joyce. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, man, I, I would love to, to learn how to long arm and get a long arm machine. I don't know. Lately, I've been saying that more and more. Just a long arm machine. It'd just be so cool. But yeah, <laughs> I definitely think I need to get the hang of, hang of it on a normal machine first. But yeah, it's the thinking ahead. That's what I'm. That's what I'm a little worried about. Am I going to be able to think ahead? All right. So now, okay. So I have these little. They're holly, and they have like these little bit of bitty arches in. I'm kind of tempted to do them like how we did these, where we did kind of like basically a chain stitch like this, where we where we um tack it down in the middle. I think I might try that for these holly leaves. It might be a little bit busy, but I don't know. We're going to give it a try because I like the little arches in, in the stitches. 
We'll see how it goes. It might look silly, but oh well. That's okay. It'll just be more filled in, if anything. So this is like a little mini arch. And then we're tacking it down. All right, so I think I just got another loopy knot. So remember, I did not, I did not separate the threads this time. So when you separate the threads and then put them all back together, they, they lie a lot flatter. And since I didn't do that this time, they're getting pretty twisty. And so I had a couple knots already. So I don't know, to me that's saying I should separate the threads next time. So I don't have all these little loopiness things happening. And some, some brands of floss are a little worse at that than others. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Like you, it's hard to see a difference, but I don't know, this particular brand, it's definitely twisting up a little bit more because I didn't separate them. There, I like, I like that we're getting a little bit of these arcs. It's subtle, but I, but I like it. There we go. I always put the, the thread in the direction that the arc's going. Let's see, look, still nodding up a little bit. Man, there's a lot of little uh, little details to these to these leaves. I'm thinking we might not we might not get all these leaves done tonight. Uh, we might might be going at this again tomorrow. We'll see. I'll still set up the machine and everything, but we may still be we may still be embroidering tomorrow at this pace. That's how it goes, though. That's okay. Ooh, wow. There's another loopy knot. Definitely going to separate my threads for the next round. All right. Last one with here. Got a whole other leaf to go yet. I might jump in and do the the little French knots right away for all these little berries. That that might be fun. Stick with the plant till I'm done. Especially since I'm gonna have to cut off the thread anyway to get to the next the next part up here. Might as well start the start the red thread for the berries and get the berries done. Oops, I forgot the forgot the little middle. Bit. Let me do that quick. The little center line on the holly. All right. I just want to eat that angel food candy so bad. Uh, sugar. Well, man, that friend is in Hawaii with her family right now, but she, uh, she sent me a pineapple in the mail today. So we had a we had a pineapple sitting out outside in the negative uh, zero this afternoon. So I'm hoping it doesn't I'm hoping it's still good that it that it can deal with the cold. We had a heat wave of uh, negative one today, which has been uh, the warmest it's been all week. <laughs> 
So how's that? That's unpleasant. But I think it's supposed to like actually get a whole lot warmer later. All right, two more little stitches here. And then we're done with the holly leaves. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna just jump into the berries right away. Because why not, they're cute. I don't, Gretchen. <laughs> I just don't leave the house. My husband's been going out and about in it, but ugh. Ugh, times 10. <laughs> there you go. All right, so there we are, cute little little leaves. It is kind of a lot going on with, with those little stitches, but I do like that I get the tiny little arcs in there, and that's okay, they can be, they can be busy. The little uh, pine boughs are busy too, so it kind of all goes together. Oh yeah, can't complain about the 17 degrees. Yeah, it's funny watching the news, because I mean, I understand that there is snow up the wazoo everywhere everywhere on the east coast and stuff and it's and you know down south and all that even um my brother in in north carolina got like a foot of snow based on his photos it looks like almost which is crazy um but you know they're so dramatic on on the news like it's 20 degrees here and i'm like 20 degrees we are a good 30 degrees less than 20 degrees Ugh. but yeah we don't have the snow right now we just have like this horrible cold mega cold and then with the wind with the wind then you have the wind chill of like negative 23 so that's pleasant <laughs> ah, that's what i think all right i don't think i need this much um there we go Oh, it's just so cold, though. I, that's why I got, like, my triple sweaters on again. I got my house, my good old house sweater on, you know. That's, I'm sure, gets, uh, you guys recognize that. That means it's cold if I'm wearing the house sweater every day. I like calling it a house sweater. We repaired it uh, once, once on here. That's why it has all these weird, weird patches everywhere. We're mending it. My mom knit it uh, a while ago, and I like it. But I wear it so often in the winter that I keep wearing holes in it. But keep repairing it. Yeah, 20 degrees takes on all your power. Well, you know, the south or, like, you know, places that aren't used to snow like that, I mean, they don't have the equipment or, or anything to deal with it. So, I mean... It's a, it's different. Like, I, like I get that it's different, but man, if you think that's cold, there's something where like you go outside and you're just hit with it, and it's just like you're hit with ice fire, ugh, and your your spine feels like it's gonna break in half. It is, it is not pleasant. All right, so I'm gonna just weave in the ends of. I'm getting stuck by my hoop here. But I'm going to weave in the back of my stitches of these leaves, and then we'll, we'll get all these little French knots going. Wow, yeah, dry hands are not a friend to the embroiderer. Uh, at least not for me tonight. My, uh, my, like, dry skin keeps hooking on the, on the thread. All right. So let's do a bunch of French knots here again. I'll zoom in for this. Oh, she had ice on her eyelashes. I believe it. My, uh, my friend, uh, she, she's a runner. And so she, she runs, I don't know if she still does, but she was running outside in this sort of weather, like a serious runner. And I've seen, yeah, pictures of her with, <laughs> with like icicles from her eyes and stuff too. It's crazy town. I could never, never do that. Ugh. Just sounds crazy. 
I'm not even sure there was uh, I'm looking, it's kind of hard to see my pencil lines, so I'm just kind of, I think I drew crayon lines or crayon dots in different places than, than uh, where I'm stitching. And so I think I already put one of these berries in the, in the wrong place. Oops, sorry. Oh, she was a runner too. Yeah, they're the serious outdoor ones. So I think we're gonna have an extra, an extra berry here, which is fine. I like doing French knots towards the end because the thread can catch on them. So that's why I need to pay attention to that here. So when I pull the thread through, it's not catching on another, another French knot. I'm gonna do two more and then I think we'll have enough. Although I have three more dots, I think. We'll just do two more. Five is a good number. Gosh, it just get, it just hits you when it's that cold out though. It suck it, it like physically sucks the air out of your lungs. Like it's freezing your your lungs. Ugh, and it is unpleasant. All right, now I kind of want to put that last little dot in. Make it more of a cluster here. Oops, I keep keep going down too far. Yeah, I'm going to put one more in. This is sweet. I like this little holly. Okay. There we are, a little holly. There we go. Cute. I like them. We'll zoom way out. So, all right, we, we got three guys done here. Uh, so it's kind of slow going, so I think we, we might have to end up working on this tomorrow yet, which is fine. Then it'll be perfectly timed to uh, uh, starting the next, the next project. Oh, but snowmobiles look like fun. I don't know, we never got into snowmobiles when we were uh, younger. Or, or now, I guess, really. Uh, they're loud. <laughs> they, are, they are, like, neat to just get around and you can go places that you couldn't normally go, which is fun. But that's just cold, too. <laughs> I'd rather be drinking hot chocolate and sitting by a fire, personally. And, you know, knitting. <laughs> All right. Next up, let's uh, let's just jump into this one up here again. That's back to the green. I think I have plenty plenty of floss here yet for a little bit more. Uh, needle. Oh, I like watching the Winter Olympics. I think that's that's always fun. I like watching all the the skiing stuff. For some reason, I, I like that a lot. Uh, I'm going to see what's behind these guys. Okay, yeah, I'm going to weave into the ends of these. So it is it is the metallic floss, which is a little goofier, but there's a lot of stitches back here, so I think weaving into the backs of these will be okay. I'm going to grab as many threads as I can. And then back through again. All right, let's snip and we'll flip around. Oh, not curling. They don't televise curling as much as they should. That is huge here. So uh, it's that's like a huge Minnesota thing, that and, and hockey, but like for Olympics, uh, curlings. Curlings, like a big deal. I think it's kind of fun. I think that would be fun to to play. Uh, I've never done it like for real, but I just think that'd be just I don't know. It seems like there's you know there's skill, but then it's just kind of like geometry and <laughs> like I don't know. It's like uh, um, what's that game that's on like cruise ships and stuff where you have to get it like push that. Sh like shuffleboard that's what it's called right it's kind of like 
slow motion shuffleboard on, on ice, right? I like it's fun. Oh, I used to curl, Patricia. Oh, man. Oh, too darn cold. Oh, yeah, that's no fun. I don't know. I like it. I think it's neat. Oh, <laughs> hey, Athena. But yeah, it seems like there's like strategy, like you have to, like what's the other player doing? And then you have to do all your strategizing on how you're going to bump them this way or that way. And then you have to throw it just right. And I don't know, I think it's just kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. Alright, I like this one. Another little leafy green. Oh, ha <laughs> Ski, skate, hockey, and curling. Sounds about right. Alright, so I'm just trying to think of where to go next. I think I'm going to weave in the end. I might start fresh with a new bit of floss because I'm not sure this one's gonna well I do kind of have a lot here let's see maybe I can go in the backs of these stitches and just jump over I think we'll do that I'm gonna just jump into the backs of you know what I'm, I'm not I'm gonna take a more straight approach I'm gonna just go behind some of these stitches usually I don't like making jumps this big but Eh, for the sake of time and not using up thread, I, I am going to just jump behind all those stitches. Yes, the thing of that is, that is curling. You throw, what is it? It's called like the rock or something, right? You throw the rock. But yeah, there's, there's some like, it's, it is like shuffleboard, isn't it? Like you have to, you know, whoever has got the most points within whatever ring or something, right? So if you knock them out or if you knock them into an area that they go over points or, or something like that, right? Um, so I think who, who goes first is probably a big factor of it, I would think. I don't know. I'm sure there's all sorts of strategy to it. It's one of those games that I feel like you could have that like super like jerk butt team who who does, you know, who just keeps knocking you out or or does like some sneaky score or scoring technique instead of trying to like or you know like if they're if they're trying instead of to get points, they're trying to just prevent you from getting points and they don't care about their own points, like something like that. <laughs> I feel like there's probably that one team with that strategy that's just annoying to everyone else, which I think is kind of funny. Yeah, you sweep. So you throw the rock. I think it's called a rock. And then then you um, have to, yeah, use that broom to, I don't know, I think that probably controls the speed and the direction slightly, I guess I would think. I don't know, Olympic sport, I'm thinking there's a whole lot more Olympic sports than that that, you know, are questionable Olympic sports. There's, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's a sport that's recognized, so it's in the Olympics, I guess. Uh, you know, you'd think it'd be boring to watch, but it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> They don't televise it so much though. But lately, in the last uh, in the last years of the Olympics, they have been kind of televising um, the more like less less popular sports and stuff. So that's been kind of nice. You slide the rock down the ice. And it takes a keen eye, and yeah, see there you go. Ah, they should have Olympic quarter inch sewing. Yeah, and it can be an Olympic sport too because quilting is good to do in this in the winter oh you always see it oh that's nice yeah I, 
I always have a hard time finding some of that stuff. But I do like I do like all the skiing stuff. Like I like the moguls and um all the trick stuff and the slalom and giant slalom and all that. I I, I don't know. I like all that. All right. Uh, I'm gonna weep in the end here now. I don't think I have. I don't think I have enough. Could you imagine um, the announcers for a scant quarter inch competition? <laughs> That'd be funny. Slightly to the right on that, on that seam. Don't know what the judges are going to think about that. Let's get out the ruler and see how she did. All right. Um, uh, more floss. All right, I'm getting kind of quite a bit again because hopefully I can get it all done with just one more cut. Uh, yeah, it would be a whisper <laughs> like golf. That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> like the wildlife videos. Oh, the bobbin ran out immediately, or immediate uh, expulsion from the game. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine it. It'd be fun, we should do it. Olympic, a uh, new Olympic sport. All right, put that to the side and let's get these three threads together again. I think that nail polish remover kind of dries out my fingers too. I think that might be some of the issue here tonight. All righty, I'm getting Thread it again here. I didn't really go over how I thread stuff tonight. I'll show you guys that. So uh, I like the pinch method of threading, and you know, so I'm not I'm not licking the end or anything, and I'm not like trying to get it in the needle from far away like that. Um, I'm I'm pinching it, and actually, it's always kind of nice before you do that to get a nice clean cut. So just snip the end. And then I'm I'm pinching the end, and as I release the pinch, like I just roll my fingers back from the pinch, I can start to see the little thread there. And uh, the moment I see that thread, I'm just gonna put the eye of the needle right on top of the thread, and then I'm gonna keep kind of pushing through, keep on un unrolling my fingers, and it'll it'll kind of push the thread through, and then I just kind of I grab it on the opposite side, and that that seems to do the job, just about every time when I do it like that. All right, uh, we're gonna weave into that end and do that other leaf. And then I think, man, I think that might be it for the night then already. Sheesh, went quick tonight. All these little leafy bits took uh, a lot longer than I thought they would. So we'll be working on this again tomorrow, but for sure then tomorrow we'll We'll finish this all the way, I think. I don't see why we wouldn't, unless like video is not working that night or something. In that case, it will go on the unfinished pile somewhere and we will pick it up again, probably in the middle of summer, but I'm, I'm hoping that's not happening. I'm hoping we're actually gonna get it done tomorrow. Oh, holding fabric too dries your hand out. Yeah, I was kind of doing a lot of Kind of fabricy things today. I don't know. I'm probably not drinking enough water and all that too. <laughs> all right. Okay. Let's let's stitch that little center again and we'll do this other little leaf. Oh, this one's kind of fun. I'm starting with the variegated. It's starting with that bright green color 
so this this leaf is going to start out bright green whereas that other one is kind of that gray We've committed to these little stitches now for these arcs, so I'm sticking with them. And let's see, we have one more uh, evergreen bough, and then we have like this little, I don't know, leafy stick down there. Uh, and uh, that one has a couple little French knots too. And then all these these berry French knots. So I think we'll just continue kind of around. We'll, we'll do these little red French knots first and then just work our way down and around again for tomorrow. We should finish up pretty quick, so maybe we will have time for for something else. I don't know. Or it's also Friday tomorrow, so maybe we'll just finish this up and then call it an early evening. I think maybe that maybe that that'll be the deal. All right, a few more stitches. Then we'll start nice and fresh on Monday with a new project, uh, new new sewing or new uh, new medium. We'll be sewing a quilt again. Man, we've been doing a lot of quilts lately, but I'm into it still. Like you know, I like you know every once in a while I'll I'll work on a a craft like a certain like I'll be knitting for like a long period of time, and then all of a sudden I'll just be like, yeah, you know what? I'm kind of done with knitting for a little. And they'll switch it around and right now I'm still kind of liking doing the quilts. How many yards have you cut? I think you must be qualified for the yeah for the rotary cutter team. Oh man I don't know. I'm still a little scared of that rotary cutter. I think there's better people out out there for that team than me. <laughs> but man I don't know. Yeah I'd be too scared to be on that team. I'd be on like I don't know. I'd be down to be on like the paper piecing team. I'm kind of into that, the foundation paper piecing. We should do one of those projects again. All right, there we go. We got our little, little holly leaves. We'll weave it in and I will use the same thread tomorrow and we'll start uh, up the next little, little deal. Next evergreen tree thing. All right, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave my needle in the, or my thread in the needle yet too even. So we'll just, we'll just let that hang out. We can give a, a Zeb will just have a little tail hanging from him there. All right, uh, let's flip around. We'll take it out, oop, I got fuzzles. We'll take it out of the hoop again for the evening. And we'll give it a look-see. Ooh, I could be the one on the Wonder Clipper team. Nice. That'd be fun. Although I still have a hard time picking them up, but they're like just little. I keep feeling like I'm going to fling them across the room. <laughs> All right. It is coming together. Wow, that really adds so much texture. Like, look at this one compared to the one that we don't have stitched yet. It's just, it just has such a different feel, don't you think? Like, this one has... All, all that texture of all the little stitches and the French knots. And um, yeah, compared to the other one, I'm liking it. I'm, and you can still see the color, like you can still see the color popping behind the little, little bits yet. I like it. All right, guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we will call it a Thursday. All righty, so here we are again. Cute, I'm excited for it. We'll get those last little leaves done tomorrow. And yeah, this project will be done. I have no idea what I'm gonna make out of this yet, but maybe it'll pop up again in a future project if we you know, need a little kind of decorative piece to it or something. Um, maybe like the, the notebook cover or something like that. Uh, and uh, just uh, one last thing I just wanted to remind you again, uh, since I haven't taken it down yet, <laughs> if you want that winter version of the pattern, it is free when you get the PDF or the printed, the uh, iron-on version, the physical version of the pattern. So 
I was supposed to take it down on uh, Monday, but I didn't, so it's still there. So you still have time to sneak that in. I'll probably take it down this weekend. I'll be on the computer a bunch. So, all right, that's that. And uh, take a look at the splendidsampler.com because uh, it's my, my little crocheted block again. Here, let me grab that again. Oh my God, this quilt is so heavy. But there, that's uh, my little block for the week. I got my, it's all uh, pinned yet from being quilted. So uh, that is the current block for the Splendid Sampler. And it's neat. So if you scroll down on the post that I put up here for um, for the Splendid Sampler, if you click on that and then go to that, that blog post, if you scroll down, you can see a bunch of other people's version of the block. And, and that's just really fun to kind of see how, you know, it's the same block, but how different everyone makes it. So uh, check that out. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. This will go up uh, at YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies when I'm done here. Oh, you should, Gretchen, and then share share uh, your progress in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I'd love to see your splendid sampler blocks. And, and I have all those splendid sampler blocks on YouTube. Some of them are like way old from when we were just starting to do live video. So they're a bit different than the later ones, but they're all all there if you need help going through them. So. All right, guys, I will catch you tomorrow. Thanks again for joining me tonight. See you later.